Hey everyone, welcome back to COVID Conversations. You may notice that this format is a little bit different than it has been, and that's because my internet at my house has decided to be choppy, which is really extraordinary when I am working full-time from home seeing clients. This is really working out well. Um, <laughs> and so, uh, which is a perfect segue into one of the things that we wanted to talk about today, which is should, because in the last five minutes, getting ready to record this video, <laughs> I think I said the word should about 20 times, like this should just work. What is wrong? This should be so much easier than it is. And um, turns out it shouldn't be necessarily. Yeah. So if you're experiencing a lot of shoulds in your vocabulary, especially more recently, we totally get it. Shoulds happen to come up when we feel more stressed and frustrated, when we are in a bit more of that stress response, and there's not a pause before we're necessarily thinking. Robin and I had decided to record at a certain time. We have a limited amount of time, and so that created this pressure that uh, kind of elevated these should statements to the forefront. So let's maybe talk about what should statements are and why they're so not helpful. <laughs> So should mm -hmm. statements are yes. really, so, oh, and our internet should be working better because we're overlapping here a little bit, but so should statements really are statements where you just use the word should, whether it's in regard to your own thoughts or behavior or someone else's or the world's, like the world should be doing this, the government should be doing this, so we won't get into the politics of things, but that should is coming up a lot around what's going on with this current COVID situation. And in this circumstance, right, when a should act actually sort of increases the tension and anxiety that we feel, then it's time to start looking at it and determine whether or not framing things that way is actually helping us, right? Because I think we can all fundamentally agree that there are things we would like to be doing differently or things we would like other people to be doing differently. Mm -hmm. But when we get into this should, when we're shooting on ourselves or someone else, what it tends to do is actually just make us feel angry or make us feel anxious or make us feel like a failure, right? So I'm seeing a lot of shoulds with my clients around, I should be, you know, cleaning out all my closets right now. Mm -hmm. I should be, you know, whatever, like, um, exercising for two hours a day. I should be making healthy meals at every option. And all those shoulds do is basically set up a comparison where we are failing, which obviously contributes to a decline in, in mental health. Absolutely. And so the trick out of shoulds is to first increase your awareness about them. And when they come up, to notice them with compassion and without judgment, because it can be easy for that cycle to just keep spinning. And you say, oh my gosh, another should came up. I shouldn't be doing the shoulds, right? That's not going to help us get anywhere. So having compassion and understanding that, as Robin said, this is something that comes up when we are stressed and it only creates more stress. So if we can say, oh, okay, there's a should. Let me take a deep breath because doing that can help to shift you out of that negative thought spiral. So doing something like that can, can just put in enough of a pause where you can maybe then look for another thought. So for example, when we were just going through our situation with the internet not working so well, we were about to give up and then Robin kind of paused and said, wait a minute, let me try my phone. So it was, it was as if we had to kind of get to a space where we were calm enough before a new idea could come in. Mm -hmm. And I think that's so helpful to remember that that pause helps almost everything universally, right? Mm -hmm. um, but, but in this moment, the shoulds of what we should be doing differently actually also, I think, end up being major roadblocks to us actually doing something, right? So it almost became a roadblock to us recording this conversation. And if you think about that, like with exercise, for example, I should be going for an hour long walk today. Well, if we take a deep breath and pause, maybe what we can do is actually find a replacement thought or an alternative thought that sounds more like, you know what? I will commit to going outside and walking for 15 minutes because that's what's reasonably gonna fit in my day today. 
and changing it from what you should do to what you will do increases your sense of being in action mode. Absolutely. And it helps us to control what we can control, which is something that we've talked about on here before. Another reason I think the shoulds come up is because sometimes it can feel like it's consistent with the way we really feel about ourselves. So if we feel like we are lazy and then we say, I should be going for an hour long walk. I am lazy and I should be doing this, but I'm not. Those are consistent. And so our brain likes consistency. So to create create consistency, we have those things that match. And if we end up going for the walk, then at some level, our brain senses dissonance because here we are thinking we're lazy, but then we're going for a walk. So it doesn't feel right. So obviously the best thing to do would be to upgrade that belief about I am lazy to maybe I am an active person or I'm a healthy person. Uh, but doing that can take time. So when those shoulds come up, it can also be an indicator of a larger underlying belief. And that's why I think in our cognitive behavioral therapy work with clients, we focus so much on the underlying belief, core belief structures that we have, and why we created that belief shifter formula and other things. Because if we don't upgrade the belief, like the software or the hardware, I mean, then it's really hard to have the software be upgraded and run differently, right? So yep. we almost have to sort of download an update to those belief systems in order to target some of those shoulds in a new way. Totally. Yep. And this is a practice. It's not just about like replacing the word should with something else. It's about shifting the way that you look at yourself and your language and how that all fits together. So again, we hope that this is helpful and that if you're experiencing shoulds, please know that you're not alone. Have compassion with yourself when they come up and think of a different way that you can frame it to make it more action oriented. All right, folks, yes. that's all for today. See you next time.